Hi. So this is where our microwave has lived down here on the floor and it, it's kind of a pain to use. So it'd be, nice, it'd be nice to hold it up higher. So what we thought we'd do is make kind of a tower. It would hold the microwave and recycling and a shredder and a tray for mail and kind of be a column of function here in the utility room. For this video, I'll build the little base that it sits on and the tray on the top. I'll get started by building the base of the little, the little pedestal that it sits on and I'll make it out of maple. So I'll get some pieces of maple ready. So I'll cut them somewhat rough length and then joint the pieces and cut them down a little bit more and then plane them to the final thickness. Now for each side, I'm going to make a little mitered three-sided frame, I guess you'd say. So I need 45 degree angles cut into it. So I started by doing a rough 45 degree cut on the radial arm saw. And that got the pieces down to a manageable size. I don't really have a good 45 degree miter sled, so I attached a piece of wood to my regular sled as a, as a 45 degree fence and I can do the, the final cuts on that. Now these don't have to be exactly 45 degrees because it's not making a full four-sided frame. So as long as they're pretty close, it's okay. I use biscuits to make the joints. These do need to be somewhat strong because it'll be holding up the, the whole cabinet. Now I was going to use the band clamp and, and run a piece across the bottom and, and do a whole bunch of stuff and then I figured out that I can just clamp it with regular bar clamps. As long as you've got the force on, on both sides sort of holding it together, it, it seems to work. Now I cut out the inside of these pieces on the CNC. I could have done this on the band saw, but I thought I'd try it this way. And I think what I've found philosophically is that with more traditional tools, you start to screw things up slowly so you can get back on track. Whereas with a CNC, you can screw it all up in an instant. <laughs> and what that means is there's lots of setup time when doing it on the, on the CNC. It, it'll cut and do the work really quickly and you can just kind of stand back and watch, but there's all this time beforehand getting it set up. And there's a little bit of cleanup. I made these a hair big, so I can then trim them down once they're all together. I can carefully join the top. I figured out the height I was going to need these, so I trimmed them down to the height that I wanted. And doing it this way, I can do the height on all four sides at the same time, so they're all exactly the same. These pieces need, need a miter cut at each corner. And I do have a miter sled for ripping, I guess you'd say. So where the blade is angled at a 45 degree angle. So I can cut the miters in these. And I think I did the first cut and then I went back and made them all a little bit smaller and cleaned up that surface where the, where the cut is made, which gave me a little bit better joint at the corners. And I can use biscuits again at the corners. I think I did two per side. And then at this point I could sand the surfaces because it wasn't together yet. It made it a little bit easier. And I can glue everything together. I did do a, a dry fit before this. I always do that with biscuits. You don't want to be in the middle of gluing and having it not go together because it's too late at that point. And it took some convincing to get everything tight. I took everything off and one of my miters had, had come apart a little bit. My first thought was to take it apart and just re-glue it, but it wasn't coming apart completely very easily. So I ended up using pocket screws to hold that joint together. So I put a couple of screws into that, that seam, and that seemed to work pretty well. It pulled the joint back together again. Now another part to this base is I'm going to make a ring of wood that'll sit on the inside and it'll hold the cabinet up just a little bit so there'll be a reveal between the base and the cabinet. So this is what the cabinet will actually sit on. 
And it doesn't need to be real pretty because you won't see it, but it does have to be the right height. So I have it up the thickness of a piece of three quarter inch plywood. If you try and make the one big part of a project fit perfectly with another big part of a project, it tends to not work very well. <laughs> it tends to not look real good and it tends to not fit or, or align as perfectly as you'd like. So it, so it sometimes makes sense to just hold the two big parts apart just a little bit and give a little reveal between the two. And then the, the little bit of difference in the two pieces don't, don't matter so much. So that's basically what I'm doing here. So the base is put together now. Now I can make the tray that goes on the top of the cabinet. So I have some more maple and I can get that ready. Cut it to length and joint and plane it. Now I started to cut it down to the thinner pieces that I needed on the table saw and there was a lot of stress in this piece of wood. It just, it went about this far and then it just wouldn't go. It wouldn't even fit into my little fin on the, on the throat plate and it got stuck in the blade. So I found the, the bandsaw works great for wood like this. You can just cut whatever and it, it just cuts it. <laughs> because you don't have the, the thickness of the blade in there. I ripped the pieces down on the bandsaw. And I found that I got a lot of curve in the piece once it was cut. All of that stress was relieved. So I had to rejoint those pieces. And luckily I had left myself with a bunch of extra width. Now this maple is going to be a top cap, and then below that will be a piece of plywood that will make the, the sort of the, the main box of the tray. So I need a little rabbit to fit that plywood into. And I wanted to have it be flush on the inside so that you wouldn't have a lip on the inside of the box for things to get caught on. So it's a, a little bit of a tricky joint because that rabbit had to be exactly the depth of the plywood so it would be flush on the inside. And once I had the, the pieces for the sides made, I could then start to cut those into the, the frame of the tray. And I wanted to put a handle on each end, so I cut a handle into the maple section. And the first one I cut, cut great, and it, it seemed like it was working just fine. And then the second one I cut, there was a lot of chip out on the maple. I don't know if I, I didn't have the router going in a good direction I think was part of it and I had it starting and stopping in kind of a weird place so the second handle didn't work as well so that'll be the one that goes against the wall <laughs> now to cut this on my miter sled because it's sort of an L shape I need a piece of wood that goes into that inside part of the L as I'm cutting it on the sled just so the clamps have something to push against so I planed down a scrap piece of wood to exactly the thickness it was going to need. And you can see the, see the piece of wood there on the inside of the, the L of the, the frame piece of wood. So I can cut the miters on the sled now. I cut them a little big to begin with, or a little long. Then I slowly cut them shorter and shorter to get my box to be just the right size, which was going to be to where it would fit into the top of the cabinet. And I wanted it just, just a little bit loose so it wouldn't get, it wouldn't get stuck or be hard to, to pull out of the, the cabinet. And then I cut the sides to the right width. And they needed a little dado in the bottom for the bottom of the tray to fit into. Then I can cut the, the bottom of the tray. And I found some really small biscuits that I could use for this. It just, just barely fit. <laughs> and I found for, for some things like this, it helps to do the glue on one end, let that dry, then open it back up again and put the panel in and do the final side. So I'm not trying to do all four joints at once, plus the bottom, and it's nice and square. <laughs> So now I have the base and the top made. So in the next video, I'll do the main cabinet and the drawers. Thanks for watching.